If I would have known these 10 tips I'm gonna talk about today before I started my photography business, my life would have been way easier when I came to London over nine years ago. And then yes, I made it as a full-time freelance photographer and creative director, but it took me longer than expected because I've learned all these things the very hard way. So grab a pen and paper because you really need to remember every single point I'm gonna tell you today. And the first one would be that it's okay to work for free. And let me explain. Um, it's good to work for free when you are a beginner, for example. So you are building a portfolio. So many of you are asking me, how do I build a portfolio or post in social media if I'm not working with clients? You don't need to. You can do collaborations for mutual interest, let's say, for example, you shoot with a model and that model wants pictures for free and you want those pictures for your portfolio and there is a mutual interest. So you can do that and you can build your portfolio. So that's a great way to work for free for mutual interest and for your portfolio and grow as a photographer and learn new things. And then also professional photographers like me and more experienced than me, we still work in form of collaborations as well. Because sometimes maybe you take over a project you really want to have in your portfolio and that's okay to do it for free if you think it's gonna add value. Otherwise, no. And so many people do this and they do the mistake, so don't do that. But if there is interest for you and your portfolio as a photographer, just do it. And then as well, when you work for free, you put your name out there. So obviously in social media, you're gonna be more not famous, obviously, it's very hard to do that nowadays. <laughs> but you put your name out there and people tag you and people see your profile, so it's very good for that. But you have to be very careful because the second point is stop working for free. <laughs> and now I elaborate this. This is something we all struggle at the beginning and I dare to say you are struggling as well. So probably you didn't start getting paid yet and you are taking jobs for free all the freaking time. Maybe you don't have the quality yet and that could be okay, maybe. I always recommend you to charge a little bit at least because that way you break the ice and you start getting paid. But if you don't think you have the quality at all, okay, maybe you can work for free, but know your limits. Because I know many people that they have already quality enough to get paid and not just a little bit actually, and they still work for free because they don't have confidence on themselves. And then I see so many photographers out there that they don't have the quality at all to get paid and because they have confidence, they are getting paid. So you are one of those that you don't know when to charge and you are all the time taking jobs for free. Just stop. So do jobs for free when they interest you for your portfolio, but don't do it all the time because otherwise you never gonna make money with your camera. Know your worth. I don't even know how much money I lost in the past because I was sabotaging myself. We all do it in the creative industry. We always think we are not good enough. And when people come to us and they tell us, oh, such a good photo, you feel so good. And it's not an ego thing. It's actually because, oh, you didn't think it was that good. And it is because we sabotage ourselves all the time. I keep improving my photography and some shots are amazing. And then because I'm looking at them all the time, for me, they are not amazing anymore. And that's very dangerous because then you can always lower your rates, which happens to me time ago. And when people started to approach me and tell me, Laura, you should get paid more, that's crazy. When clients tell you that, it's because you are doing something very wrong. So always have a little bit of ego and know your worth. And if you have a quality and you have a rate and you know you deserve that, don't go lower. You can always play a little bit with discount because it's a good way to negotiate with clients and get the gig anyway. But you can do that. But what you cannot do is lower your fee like crazy, like I used to when I started, because you were scared or you didn't know you have quality enough. So don't do that. Have a little bit of ego. And if you know your worth, you go to a client, you ask for a fee. This happened to me all the time. And they lower the fee like crazy. No, I'm sorry. And I know you're going to be freaking out. It's like, Laura, is it still 200 quid? And you know, it's better than nothing. And it's doing what I love. That's the trap. <laughs> That's the trap I was into because I love what I do. I was taking all the jobs and I didn't care about the money because it's like, okay, 200, but 200 is better than nothing. Don't do that because if you don't respect your work, nobody's gonna do it. You want good clients. You don't want clients that are going lower all the time in your rates. Don't get confused with this. Clients, sometimes they're gonna tell you about a lower budget, okay? In a respectful way. And that's totally okay. They may say, I don't know, 20 quid less, 50 quid less, I don't know, like a, like a very uh, sensitive, a very sensitive fee. That's fine because we don't negotiate and you should as well. 
But when they are telling you, I don't know, you ask for 500 and they tell you, ah, my budget is 150, which happened to me, like they, it's like they offer me like very bad money. It's like, for me, it's an insult to my work. And at the beginning, I didn't care because photography was my hobby. And the way I passed from being a hobbyist to being a professional photographer was actually respecting my fees. So this is very dangerous, guys. Just because you love photography, don't think you don't deserve the money. So please, even if you're gonna lose the money, sometimes you're gonna have to do it just to respect your work. And if you don't know your quality of your photography, because it's very hard for us to actually judge our own work, try to ask friends, family, or maybe take another photographers, not to compare yourself to others, because this is very dangerous, but more or less check. This is what I did. I used to take other photographers, it's like, oh my God, this person made it, he's working full time as a freelance photographer, I'm not, and in some point, my pictures were even better. It's like, and this person is making money with photography and I'm not. Confidence is key and you should start getting paid. Invest in yourself. If you wanna grow and become a better photographer, you're gonna have to invest in photography gear. Not right now if you are a beginner, okay? Because we don't start with a very average camera. But what I mean with this is that when you start with photography, you're gonna have to spoil your craft. You have to nurture it. You have to learn new creative skills, like I'm doing all the freaking time, way too much. I think I'm a geek and I'm all the time like learning new things. But this is a good thing, guys, because nowadays you really have to adapt to social media, to content, because now there is a lot of video content out there. And as a photographer, you have to learn. And then gear. Gear and education is crucial if you want to grow in the photography industry. So you're going to have to invest. Don't be greedy with these kind of things, because if you want to make money with photography and live out of your camera, you're going to have to do it. Don't wait till you think you are ready. This never going to happen. I tell you from now. Because probably you are comparing yourself to other photographers that they are in the business for so long and you're gonna be, okay, I don't have a photography studio, I don't have all these tripods, all this lighting, all these lenses. If you are waiting to have all of that, you never gonna start. <laughs> I started with a camera and a versatile lens. That's it. You don't need everything you think you need. You just have to start getting paid with clients. That's all. And this is my motto. What did you do today that is getting you closer to where you want to be? This is something I like to ask my friends and I ask myself every single day because you're never gonna start if you start to procrastinate and put excuses all the time. I'm sure and most likely you have a full-time job and it's very hard to take your camera because you are busy and when you are not busy, you are tired or you want to socialize as well. I've been there and in London, which is such a busy place to be. So then I wasn't taking my camera enough and I wasn't investing time enough at the beginning. And this is something you have to do you're never gonna be ready, you're never gonna have all the time you need, and you're never gonna have all that gear you think you need in the first place. You just have to start with your camera, that's it. But baby steps. <laughs> it doesn't have to be intimidating. This is the main reason everyone don't start. It happened to me as well. <laughs> I was in London, I was like, okay, I had to rent a photography studio, a part of my flat, and I had to have lighting, or maybe rent it out, buy photo shoots, and then I got overwhelmed and I didn't start and all you need is a camera. This is very related to what I mentioned before. So now I have a Canon 5D Mark IV. Before, I had a Canon 7D. And before, I had a Canon 30D 13 years ago, and it had, I think, eight megapixels. Yeah, eight megapixels. Now you would be like, what the hell, how are you gonna make money with an eight megapixels camera? I did, not professionally, because that time I wasn't a freelance photographer, it was as a hobby but was getting a few jobs, you know, not very well paid, but was doing stuff. So you can get paid right away. And then I had a 7D, which is a very good camera. I was very happy with it. And I was already making money. I became a full-time freelance photographer with my Canon 7D. I have a special affection to it. And it's like eight years I had it. And it's like new because I treat my cameras like babies and uh, they've been used a lot. And then I've got my Canon 5D Mark IV when I wanted to grow, to expand my business and to charge more. So when you offer more quality, you can always charge more. And when you know video and you have new skills, like I told you before, you can charge more. And I do have a video, by the way, about tricks to raise your fees. There is so many things you can do to increase your fees or start getting paid. I'm gonna link it down below because it's very useful and it's gonna help you a lot to raise your fees. But all of these things are involved. But to start with, you just need a camera. 
And yes, I say gear does matter, but the beginning, you can make money with it. So just start shooting with the camera you have, because 100% sure is good enough to start getting paid. There are not strict rules for pricing. And I'm very excited to tell you this, guys, because I'm working on my first photography course, and it's about photography pricing, from beginner to professional. And I'm thinking about this course, I'm doing this course, because this is the main thing I struggled with when I started in photography. I had no clue who must to chart, where to start from, which things I have to consider. So I'm gonna cover all of that in the course I'm producing right now. I don't know when I'm gonna release it, but I think it's gonna be this summer. But I'm gonna tell you so many things you really need to know. But one of the main things is that it's very relative the money you can get from different clients. So for example, it's gonna vary depending on your quality, depending on the client. So never compare yourself to others because maybe you're gonna be, okay, this photographer is getting three grand for a fashion photo shoot. And I did get paid 500 pounds, for example, for a fashion photo shoot. I wasn't angry, like this photographer is getting 3,000. He had more cachet, cachet, cachet. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. He had more experience and he was bigger and the client was different. And yes, in the fashion industry, you can get paid a lot of money. I did 500 and in that year, my level was good enough for that and I was very happy with 500. So don't compare yourself to others ever, in this situation at least not, and just know that it's very relative. As long as you are happy with the fee, that's good enough. But watch out for the photography course I'm gonna do because this is gonna be super useful for you to price your photography the right way and don't lose money. Learn to say no. This is very dangerous, okay? Maybe you love photography, for sure you love photography, but then when it becomes your job, you can really burn out if you take over jobs you don't want to do. And this happened to me from time to time because we all have to pay bills and so many times I take over projects I don't like, but I need the money. So if the money is worth it, go for it. If it adds to your portfolio, go for it. But if it's a project, you are not excited, just learn to say no. You don't have to take over everything just because it's photography work. You have to be very careful because this was one of my main fears I had with my camera. I was thinking I love photography and now if it becomes my job, Maybe I'm gonna start hating it because there is a lot of commitments when you actually start a career in photography and there is a lot of things you have to learn how to adapt and it can be very dangerous. So you have to say no and it's totally okay to say no to projects you are not interested about. Create different income streams. This may surprise you because you're gonna be Laura, I'm a portrait photographer, what I'm gonna do? You can do a lot. I wish I started my YouTube channel before. So what happened to me, I think if you follow my channel, and if you don't subscribe, by the way, and like the video, you are taking something valuable from it. So when I started my channel, it was when the lockdowns started. Because as a portrait photographer, I got screwed, basically. It's like, how I'm gonna shoot now? How I'm gonna make money if we are in a lockdown? You know how bad is that? It's then when I realized I needed to expand my income streams, and I went online. You can monetize every single skill you have. You have YouTube, you have Instagram, you have social media, you can do courses, you have affiliate marketing. I do have a full video about this for photographers to make money without clients. And I think this is gold. I'm gonna link it somewhere here. But it's very useful because even if you are a beginner, you can make money online with photography and with no clients. You're gonna have to expand because I think it's very clear after what happened in the world that we are not safe. So you really have to be very clever. If you focus on just one niche, and just with client work, it's very dangerous nowadays. And I think the online world is expanding like crazy and you should start. Stop focusing on social media. You don't even know how much time I wasted on Instagram trying to grow. For a long time, I don't do it. I don't care anymore. It's a way to get closer to you guys. I share my Instagram stories, my photography, and all of it. But I'm spoiling more my website because social media is for what it is. It's good to expand over there and get your name out there to collaborate with people, to attract clients. This is very good for that. So behind the scenes, social media is a tool. But it can be a very dangerous place to be as a photographer, first of all, because you're gonna be comparing yourself to others for way too many hours rather than shooting and getting better. You're gonna be focusing too much on how to grow on Instagram and hack the Instagram algorithm rather than learning photography or shooting more with models to be a, more with models or landscape, whatever you do. What I mean with this is like stop wasting time in social media. It's good to have it. You have to be in social media. It's a very good tool to have. But focus more on getting better as a photographer. Focus on having a website with your own branding, 
your own email, your own blog. I explained in a video as well on my YouTube channel about how important it is to have a blog as a photographer. And there is many other things involved when you have a website. And this is the professional way to do it. And we all know that social media networks, sometimes they go down. Like I think it was two months ago, Instagram went down. And my private messages on Instagram, they look like with a black bar on top and I couldn't read. So imagine how bad is this if you rely on Instagram only to find clients. It's very good to find clients, but don't rely just on that. So please focus on your website and focus in your photography business and be in social media, but learn the limits and don't be there wasting your time because it's super dangerous. It still happens to me. I'm saying this because it happens to me. I start scrolling and I, I love photography, so we all get stuck over there, but don't get stuck too long because it's very dangerous. So build a portfolio and you don't have it yet with collaborations and then do baby steps towards your photography business but start because the time is passing and I don't know about you but I'm in London and the times are passing like crazy I can't even believe we are almost in July well basically it's July by the time I post this video stop wasting the time and do it now you don't need to do everything in one go just little by little slowly slowly something every day to get closer to your dreams anyway I'm gonna put more links below for other videos about how to get clients as a beginner how to build a portfolio that converts into clients and many others so go check them out because they're gonna help you a lot Subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Big love. Ciao.